What's up guys, my name is DJ Swivel and on this week's episode of Storytime, I'm gonna be sharing with you how I landed my first, well, technically second, uh, studio internship in New York City. But before we get started, make sure you like, subscribe, comment, hit the thumbs up, do what you gotta do, and let's dig into it. DJ Swivel, DJ What's up guys, my name is DJ Swivel and on this week's episode of Storytime, we're digging into how I landed my first internship. Um, I landed my first internship in 2006, though I interviewed at the end of 2005 and it was in New York City. Um, technically, it was actually my second internship, but the first one I landed you know, earlier that year, uh, or rather sort of midway through 2005 in New York. Um, it was at a studio that didn't really kind of work on the music that I wanted to work on and I just didn't really see a lot of upward mobility there. So I actually quit and, um, you know, being a Canadian in America on a student visa, quitting the only job that you have is like really not a great uh, a, a, a great thing to do because it puts you in a position where now you have to find something and it's got to stick because, you know, for anybody who is uh, either never had to do a visa, which is probably most of you guys, uh, you know, you have to prove like why you are worthy of a visa if you want to come uh, to the U.S. So usually that means like in my case, like showing credits and, uh, you know, accolades and any sort of things that you can sort of point to and say, you know, I've done that. That's special. You need to give me a visa because nobody else can do that. Um, and so anyways, uh, it was not a great idea to uh, quit my first internship. But in my heart of hearts, it just didn't feel right. And so I did. Um, for about two months there, I was sort of just like floating around New York trying to figure things out. Uh, posting gigs on Craigslist and, you know, just the, the, you know, anything I could do to get even a little bit of engineering experience. And then I was communicating with my old university uh, and they have like a placement program where they look for jobs in, in the work, uh, in the sort of in the field that you're looking to work in. And my advisor over there sent me he sent me on a few job interviews, which were okay, but nothing that really uh, made immediate sense. And then he sent me an opportunity to intern for a guy named Duro. And I saw that email and I saw the, you know, who Duro was and all of his accolades and all of the things that, that he's done to create an amazing career for himself. And I thought, this is the guy who's going to teach me. This is like exactly where I want to be. It was everything. If you don't know Duro, he's, you know, a uh, producer, uh, owns Desert Storm Records, uh, and also a world famous, world class mix engineer, one of the best, um, especially in hip hop. Uh, I mean, he's mixed everything you can ever imagine, you know, Jay-Z, Nas, uh, F Fabulous, like, like you name it. I mean, it, it, I'm actually doing him a disservice by even just naming a few because if you go through Duro's credit list, it's literally everybody. Um, and so uh, I knew that that was the place where I could learn what I needed to learn and what I wanted to learn. And so I applied to the internship and I put, you know, I sent in a resume, I put all of the, the uh, important sort of things, you know, graduated with, you know, top of my class at university and, uh, you know, I was a DJ and I had played nightclubs, so I kind of was already peripherally working in music and I've been producing for X number of years and engineering for X number of years. Uh, and basically just anything I could put on there to get his attention and show that I really wanted this and I wanted it badly. So I sent my resume in and I didn't hear anything for about two weeks and I got an email back two weeks later from Duro's assistant. Um, his name was Josh and he emailed me and said, Hey Jordan, we loved your resume. Um, but unfortunately you mentioned you were a DJ and 
you know, we've had actually problems in the past where DJs leak music from our studio and so we can't really take that risk. So this is actually just a courtesy email to you to uh, change your resume if you're gonna try to apply for other uh, jobs at studios, GA jobs at studios. And you know, thanks for your interest, best of luck. Uh, when I read that email, I, was, I felt defeated initially. Um, I felt defeated because I, I knew that Duro was going to be the guy who would teach me what I needed to learn. He was the guy. There was no plan B. There was no other option. He was everything that I needed to get to the next stage in my life. And so I thought about it for a minute, trying to figure out, do I respond to this? How do I respond to this? And I said, you know what? I'm going to try something new and I'm just not going to take no for an answer. I'm going to pretend like he never said that and, you know, ask for uh, an interview. <laughs> so, uh, so I responded and I said, I basically just begged for an interview. I said, Hey Josh, uh, so sorry you feel that way. You know, I would never leak music. I want this more than anything. You have no idea. Please give me an opportunity. Let me come in, meet me you know, see what I'm about and then decide. If you still don't think that I'm the right fit, then I'm not the right fit. Uh, and he responded and he said, you know, we've already actually filled the position, um, but if you'd like to come and get a tour of the studio, we can give you a tour of the studio. And I thought, okay, well, I'll take what I can get. A tour of the studio is better than nothing. Uh, and he said, you can, you can come up now. Here's the address. And the address was about, Mm, 14 small blocks away from where I lived uh, in New York City. So anybody who's lived in New York, you know those small blocks. Uh, I lived on 30th Street. It was on 44th Street. I walked up there right away, instantly. And uh, I get up there about 15 minutes later. Uh, well, it might have been an hour later. I probably got ready and stuff. But by the time I left my house, 15 minutes up there, and I'm so nervous. Because I already know they've they filled the position, but I'm still trying to think of any anything I can do to get them to reconsider. And uh, I had not met Duro at this point, but I get up to the studio. It was in the Film Center building in uh, in Manhattan, and I walk in. Uh, Josh greets me in the lounge, and he says, "Sit tight and wait in the lounge." And so I'm waiting, I'm waiting. I hear some music from the, down the hallway where the studio is. Um, but for the most part, it was, it was pretty quiet in there actually. And eventually, maybe 15, 20 minutes later, Josh comes back out and says, uh, okay, Duro's ready to see you. So I'm really nervous. My heart's, heart's uh, pumping. And I go down, I follow Josh down into the studio and this was really the first time I was in a studio that felt like magic was happening in there. You know, I had, like I had mentioned before, I had a previous internship a few months earlier, but it was at a jazz studio and there was nothing in there that was really for me. And um, this was the first time, like I was, I walked down the hallway and I, you know, saw uh, some of the pictures and, uh, plaques and, and things like that. And I, I walk into the room and Duro's sitting at the desk and I sit down on the couch and I just say, hi, I'm Jordan Young. Thanks for seeing me. I'm so glad uh, you let me come up. And then he proceeded to sort of interview me and ask me some questions. And, um, and I tried my best to answer as best I could. And then he asked if I had any questions for him. And, uh, you know, I did. I asked him about uh, you know, just some of the projects that he's, he's worked on and, um, you know, you know, what his favorite project he's ever worked on was and just little things like that. Um, just really to show that I was normal and I could have a, a healthy conversation with him and it wasn't awkward. And, uh, I thought that would be my best bet is like, he's just got to like me and then, then he'll invite me in. So, uh, we do the interview. He's like, well, thanks for coming. Glad you could see the studio. And, uh, you know, we'll be in touch if we need you. So I thought, okay, well, I didn't get a gig, but at least I got to meet Duro. At least he's put a, a 
name to the, or face to the name rather. Uh, and I go home a little disappointed. Uh, this would have been November of 2005 when I did the interview. It was in November. And I didn't hear anything for a few more weeks. But then I got a call from Duro and he said this would have been towards, this would have been on during my, my Christmas holiday. So it would have been, you know, December 20th or something like that. And he calls me and he said, um, hey, if you still want the internship, it's yours. You start on January 2nd. And I was like, wow. Uh, I think I was at home in Toronto uh, for the holidays at this point. And I said, wow, he, I, like, I just, I got the job. Like, I didn't take no for an answer. I told him, you know, like, trust me, I wouldn't ever leak music, blah, blah, blah. They already gave the internship away and somehow I got it. Uh, and so at that point I knew that really I could, if I was persistent enough, I could get anything I wanted out of this business. You just have to really, you know, keep hammering, keep hammering and, and really don't take no for an answer. Um, you know, you have to understand uh, just context of how you're communicating with people and just be self-aware and make sure you're not, you know, making yourself look crazy. But for the most part, you know, if you ask and you ask persistently and kindly, uh, good things will happen. So, uh, yeah, that's how I got the internship. And I remember I, uh, I was going to stay in Toronto through the new year and I said, nope, not doing that anymore. So I, uh, went home early, uh, to my new home, uh, in New York, uh, early so that I would be prepared and ready to go for, uh, for Duro on January 2nd. And I went in on January 2nd and the first day on that I worked there, uh, Fabulous and Styles P came in the studio to record the remix for Mariah Carey. I want to say it was either Don't Forget About Us or We Belong Together, one of the two. Um, and yeah, they both came in. And so literally on my first day, I'm, I'm like washing the toilets and, and, and scrubbing the floors and vacuuming and fetching food. Uh, but I did get to meet uh, meet, uh, Styles P and Fab. And when I say meet, they walked in and I just kind of nodded <laughs> and said nothing. Uh, and so from that moment on, I knew if I put in the work here, if I really show, uh, my passion for this and do good work, uh, that this will be an amazing environment for me to grow and eventually find success myself. And, uh, and I really do credit that internship and what I learned under, I think I worked with Duro for three years. Uh, what I learned under him for those three years uh, gave me all of the foundation I ever needed to start a career in music. And so I'm forever grateful for that. And just that whole experience of having to like fight for my position, uh, you know, it, it, it just taught me a lot and it gave me a lot of confidence in moving forward and, and, and you know, building a career in the music business because it can be tough. So that is the story of how I landed my first internship. Um, and to this day, I'm still great friends with Duro and, and we have an amazing working relationship. And so I'm just forever grateful for that uh, mentorship throughout my career. Uh, and yeah, hopefully that helps you guys. Anybody who's trying to get started in the music business, you know, that's what it takes is like, don't take no for an answer, really fight your way for it. Um, and good things will happen. So Till next time, I'm DJ Swivel. Peace.